Thunderdome Boxing Talk, Anthony here. Alright, uh, you guys should love this. I did anyway. Um, Lomachenko pretty much, you know, blasts the whole featherweight division. Um, really slams Regan Dow uh, also. You know, he said, said something pretty pretty bad. And I know Rigo's like a, a hothead, so this should piss him off pretty fucking bad. Maybe we'll actually get the fight. Because, you know, before... Uh, what happened, and now, which I'll go over, but then you know now that Bob Arum is again trying to get this fight made, um, now that Gary Hyde's out of the picture, if that if that was the problem then, with him out of the picture, he's trying to get it made now again um, for tw sometime 2016. Uh, so that's, you know, one good thing, but I, I don't know if we'll get it, man. But Loma, you know, I was pretty harsh on him for this uh, opponent he's facing, um, and I almost felt sorry, like just a little bit, but no, not really, because um, it is a bad pick, but now it lets me understand why a little more. Um, I still think they probably could have found someone better, uh, and that's the point, but he went in on everyone. Man. First off, he started out, you know, the, let's get this whole 130 thing out of the way. Uh, people talking about him going up to 130. He said, yes, it, it, it's inevitable. You know, he's definitely going up to 130 eventually. But first, he wants to clean out 126. And that's what I love hearing a fighter say. He's not trying to bounce around, snatching up easy titles. Because he could go up to 130 right now and grab an easy title and be, boom, two-time world champion. I mean, you know, it's it's nonsense. He don't need to do that. He has great guys here, um, good fighters here. He has champions here. Um, good fights. He needs to get them on, right? Well, he wants to. He wants to clean the division out, and then he'll, he'll move up. But I don't even have a problem with one division fighters. You know, I always go to Hagler, but there's other instances and stuff too. But as long as you are, if you stay in one division, for your whole damn career, I don't care as long as whoever comes along, you're whooping their ass. You're fighting them. You don't avoid anyone. You get all the belts. You know, then you're undisputed. You kind of just defend uh, your belts, right, against any comers. The guys coming up from divisions, like for middleweights or whatever, uh, take like B-Hop, for example, 54-pounders. Um, Moved up, you know, like Tito and an Oscar. So he got to spank their ass. Um, show them that, hey, I'm, I'm the middleweight, you know. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I want to see that done. If there's any 22-pounders that want to move up, like a Regan Dow, that can happen. Um, you know, so that's great. He says he wants to get all the belts, clean out the division. Then he'll move up. But the problem is... No one wants to fight him. He's tried everywhere. All right, no one wants to fight him. Um, he started with Gary Russell Jr. You know about when Gary Russell said, um, "I can beat Loma 99 out of 100 times." Um, I just had that one bad night. It was that one out of the 99 out of 100, and I lost. So, the next 99 times I fight him, I'm going to beat him, right? And Loma don't like that at all. Apparently, that statement pissed him off. Uh, because what he said was, you know, so he, he said he could beat me 99 times out of 100. Well, then, why haven't we fought again? Um, why won't he fight me again? And then he says, why aren't we fighting now? <laughs> you know, uh, putting him on blast. Then he says, quit hiding behind your promoter slash manager. He didn't say slash, but he said promoter or manager, um, meaning Al Heyman. Um, basically told Gary Russell, well, if you can beat, you know, if that one, if that one was the one out of the 99 out of 100, you lost. You're guaranteed to win your next 99. You're at least guaranteed to win your next one. So you have a guaranteed win in a unification fight against a pound-for-pound -pound type fighter. So why wouldn't you go snatch that belt right off of his ass, right? Well, that's the question we all want to know. And surely does Loma. 
Um, all he can say is, you know, he just tells him, shut your mouth, unless you're fighting me, shut your mouth. Um, and, you know, if, if that's the truth, then why aren't we fighting? Why haven't we fought again? Um, why aren't we, you know, scheduled to fight again? Or why ain't we fighting now? Uh, and then he says, quit hiding behind our hand. You know, and she says manager and promoter, but I'll keep ma every time he says manager and promoter, I'm just gonna say Al Heyman because uh, he says it a few times, right? Um, I mean, he blasts everyone. You know, Leo Santa Cruz, uh, he can get it. Um, Gary Russell Jr. obviously uh, already got it. Um, Lee Selby, you know, I didn't know that him and Lee Selby, right? Him and Lee Selby um, were gonna fight. You know, he says, me and Selby were going to fight. Um, it was going good, but it didn't happen. And he says, not not because of me, not on my end. Uh, you'd have to ask Lee Selby why he didn't fight me. Uh, so that's depressing to hear that, you know, I kind of figured that anyway, but it's sad, man. You're a fucking champion. You don't want to unify? What, you think this other guy can beat you? I mean, what are you here for? What are you here for? You know, you're just here to to milk the sport for money then? You just want to hold this belt and fight cans? Fight guys you know you can beat? Uh, how about challenge yourself? Dare to be great, Lee Selby. I dare you. Right? Uh, he didn't say that. That's me right there. But you know, He just says, we were going to fight. You know, talks were going. Everything was fine. Then he, he, he just pulled out. You have to ask him why. And that seems to be a reoccurring theme with Loma. Um, Gary Russell Jr., they brought him up again. He just said, I don't know why he talks so much, uh, but won't fight me. You know, he says, I, I can call out Mayweather and Pacquiao, but that doesn't mean I'm really trying to fight them. And how often do I talk about this? The whole call out. Ooh, so-and-so called out someone. Dude, I can call out anyone I want. Does that mean I am, you know, attempting to fight them? Uh, a call out means a dick to me if your whole if your team isn't sending contracts and trying to negotiate and work out a fight. And that has never happened because, you know, let's take Laura, since he's the most popular talked about guy with all the call outs, because he called out Kodo and Triple G and Mayweather all on the same night. After he fought a total fucking aged tomato can and couldn't get rid of him. Actually, the guy walked forward for 12 fucking rounds and he couldn't get rid of him. But he calls out three biggest fighters in the sport, right? Outside of Pacquiao. Um, and why does he call them out? It's a simple ploy. It's a simple tactic that's as old as the sport. Get your name being mentioned with the greats. And then people, you know, start thinking of you upper on their level, like, oh, shit, oh, shit, really, really, well, what about Laura and Triple G, what about Laura and Cotto, what about Laura and Mayweather, um, you know, and don't ever forget he called out Mayweather, too, man, um, Laura, he called out Triple G, K2 has stated, they're on record saying they have never heard anything, uh, from Laura's people, like, like I just said, like, trying to make a fight, um, he said a couple things in front of a, a, on a tweet, on a Twitter account, and he called him out after the fight. That was it. No attempts made to fight him. Um, he could have jumped right up. He could have just sent an offer over and said, I'll come and fight you at 160. Here's the contract. You know, I'll take a little percentage. I don't even care. Let's just fight because I think I can beat you and I'll gain my big shine off of you. But did he do that? No. Okay. Um, so get that Triple G, Duck, and Lara shit out of your head. Because first of all, Triple G would flatten the fucking shit out of Lara. Um, apparently, you've never seen the Molina fight. You've never seen the fucking short Angulo fight, for crying out loud. Um, or the Canelo fight. Uh, where, you know, Lara... The, yeah, that fight could have went either way. That's, but that's not the point. The point is Canelo was scared to death to get hit by Canelo. And what did Shane Mosley say? Um... Cotto and Canelo have 54-pounder uh, power. You know, they hit like a 54-pounder should hit. 
But he said Gennady Golovkin, because remember Mosley sparred with Gennady Golovkin. He said, but Gennady Golovkin has light heavyweight power. All right. So if he's scared to death to get hit by Canelo, what happens when he feels that first jab? Just the jab from from a Triple G. He's going to run all night. Run and run and run. And I'm not talking boxing. I mean running. Um, there was a point even in the Canelo fight where he straight ran, like turned his back and ran. Um, and he'll do that most certainly against Triple G. You know, he'll get knocked out too. He'll get stopped. Like he ain't. He it's it, it'll it'll be a wrap. Um, but calling out. Right, look at that calling out. He called out Triple G. Didn't try to make the fight though. Called out Cotto. I guarantee you he didn't try to make that fight. Um, called out Floyd Mayweather. I probably did. Actually, actually, whoa, 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 whoa. There's the Ronnie Shields interview. Uh, it's up on YouTube. You can type in Ronnie Shields, Laura Mayweather, ducking, avoiding, and it'll come up. He's like outside on the sidewalk talking. Um, I can't remember who did the interview. And, uh, Shields is kind of going off saying, you know, um, Floyd's been ducking us for fucking years. Uh, you know, and he has a case. He does have a case there. Was Lara, but then you can look at through Floyd's lens, um, when he was fighting guys, you know, like Cotto, um, like Canelo, um, and then you got the uh, some of them other fights, but then you got like Madonna, and then Madonna too, and Pacquiao, of course. So that's you know that's fine. Um, it was great actually, and then Berto. So that fight right there, the pay per view number, because you can say Lara don't sell shit, right? But number one, in all access, I mean, if they can make uh, Victor Ortiz into like a monster, like making people believe he is going to get rid of Floyd, then they can turn uh, Laura into the guy that is going to out-Floyd Floyd, that is going to embarrass Floyd, you know, use his his height, his range, his jab, Cuban, um, all that, you know, use, use the, he's a prime black fighter, use it all, all of it for, for promotion. It would sell. It would have done much better numbers than Berto, that's a fact. I mean, I would have bought that fight. He was one of the five fighters I said he should fight. You go back and listen. Remember when he was fighting Rodriguez, Antonio Tarver was like uh, freaking out over how this is the guy that should fight Mayweather. Uh, this is the guy that will beat Mayweather. Mayweather needs to pick this guy, this guy, Mayweather, Laura, Mayweather, Laura, Mayweather. That's all he kept fucking talking about, right? Well, that's an in-house fight. Easy to be made. You know damn well you can get Laura to take the tiniest amount. Um, Ronnie Shields said that they had sent like multiple offers or just contracts uh, to be an opponent for Floyd to Floyd, and they never heard anything back ever. Um, that Berto fight, when he did, obviously just didn't care about the numbers, um, that was his chance to fight anybody because the numbers didn't matter at that point, right? Yeah, it was his time to fight Brooke. That was his time to fight uh, Laura. That was his time to fight Thurman and Porter. That uh, was his time to fight Khan. He could have fought any of them, and the numbers would have done better, which meant more money in his pocket, and he could have proved that he can handle a young gun in their prime. All right? But, you know, he didn't pick one. All right? They did not pick one. Uh, so if anybody ducked Laura, <laughs> uh, it was Floyd Mayweather. If anybody, it was Floyd Mayweather. Because he called him out too. And that fight was right there to be made, and it would have made more money. It would have been the first time a Floyd and Laura fight would have made more money than Floyd versus whoever he was fighting made. So why wouldn't he have picked him that time? That's a you know unifying the titles at 54. Floyd had the ring belt. He had the WBA belt, the WBC belt up there. Um, yeah, it wasn't much of a unification at that time. But still, it, it, it would be a unification fight. Uh, it would be a big fight. 
he's fighting like basically the top dog. Um, now that Canelo's gone, the top dog basically is Lara. So he's fi fighting the top guy at 54. Let's see what happens. No, you don't do it. So, you know, if anyone's stuck in uh, Lara, it's Floyd Mayweather. You know, it's a stylistic nightmare for him. It's completely the opposite of what he wants. Uh, he don't want to deal with someone who can out-jab him, who's younger, who's fresher legged, who's bigger, stronger. He's only got five to ten pounds on him, depending on how much Mayweather's entering the ring these days, because, you know, Lara enters around 170, 170, 171. Uh, so, you know, uh, he'd be a little bigger than Floyd. What, 10 pounds heavier? I mean, for the best ever, 10 pounds shouldn't be a nothing, nothing at all. Um, that's just ridiculous. But Loma also was talking about, so them call-outs, he's basically saying, shut your mouth with them call-outs or actually fight me. Don't fucking call me out and not do anything about it and try to just get your name like you want to fight me. Actually send me a damn contract. Let's make a fight here. There's a big difference. So I don't pay attention to call outs. Like when's the last time? And there's one stable of guys that loves to call out people and never ever fight them. And that's the Heyman guys. Other than Sean Porter calling out Keith Thurman, who were kind of like, ostracized guys from Mayweather or from the you know Mayweather Heyman crew and I don't know why they're probably the two most badass dudes in that crew uh, but they're fighting each other outside of them when was the last time you seen a Heyman guy call out you know anybody and the fight happened and don't say Quillen and Jacobs because that fight was being made for months that was all set up and planned like WWE style um but they never do. They love to call out people, though. Danny Garcia loves to run his yap, but will not fight Manny Pacquiao. Uh, you know, they all do it, man. They all do it. Uh, but Lee Selby, he said that him and Lee Selby were going to fight. I think I might have said this already, but it didn't happen. Selby pulled out, and, you know, they got to ask Selby why. Um, yeah. Um... The call-outs with Gary Russell Jr., Loma said, you know, if I say something, I mean it. And if I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. So we got to hold him to that. Um, if he says, I am going to fight this guy, he cannot pull out. We got to hold him to his word. You know, unless he has, like, a legit fucking reason or something, like, fucking broke his arm or something. But, uh, no, if it's a legit the reason, okay. But other than that, you're getting held held to it. Uh, he said, I say what I mean, and I do what I say. Um, so I, I like hearing that. I like hearing that. Um, he talks about Rigo. They asked him about Rigondeaux. The first one that happened just like a month ago or whatever. He said, I agreed to fight Rigo. Um, I was in camp, getting ready for the fight. Then he pulled out. Uh, so, you know, apparently they were in talks. They were going good enough that he got into camp and started getting prepared, is what he said. Um, but then Rigo pulled out. They said, why? He said, again, I don't know. You have to go ask Rigo that. But anyone in the media knows Rigo is like a fucking recluse. Uh, he don't talk to the media. Uh, then you try to talk to Kareem Promotions. <clears throat> Anything. Look at even the Gary Hyde statement. <clears throat> and it wasn't a statement. It was just an interview. Bam. So someone tried to interview Boris. And he said, I have nothing to say. We will release a statement shortly. If you get put, if they ask you questions, why can't you answer them? Apparently you're trying to hide some shit. Right? Oh, apparently we'll have a statement out shortly. I don't even think they ever even released the statement, by the way. If they did, I never got it. Um, so it's like, you know, well, what's, what the fuck is going on there? Why can't you just speak? If you have nothing to hide, you should just speak. Because nothing bad is going to come out of your mouth. All right? So I don't like that. I think that, you know, Rigo really needs to get the fuck away from them guys, man. Away from them bad. Uh, but, you know, he's saying that we were going to fight, then Rigo pulled out. He said, um, but remember that Rigo challenged me. And then I accepted 
and he pulled out, basically saying Rigo is a bitch. Uh, you know, he challenged me. I well, first they challenged me to they challenged him to fucking 122 a catch weight meet in the middle with a weight stipulation, a rehydration stipulation of 10 pounds. I was cool with meeting in the middle, but no, you're not putting no weight stipulations on the dude. Um, he said no to that, though. Uh, then they said 126 with a 10-pound rehydration stipulation. Loma was cool with that. Because uh, he fights. Um, you know, he's had fights at 135 recently. So 136? That's nothing. And, you know, after the weigh-in in the afternoon, he can put on two more pounds easily if he needs to anyway. Um, so that's that's no problem. Uh, plus, he could just get in really, really great shape and be very fast. Uh, so he, he was down with that, but Rigo pulled out. And remember, Bob Aaron went into his own pockets for that fight. He was going to give each guy 500 k and the winner another 500 k I want to see a trilogy with them guys. I want them to have two fights back-to-back, -back, um, same type of way. You know, if it sells good and does good viewership, they make money, make the pot that the winner gets bigger, right? Make it bigger. Uh, if they're each getting 500K, make the pot 750,000. Now watch how good that fight is. Then let them each go and fight like a scrub, a little tune-up guy, uh, relax, you know, slow it down off these t tougher fights. Um, relax, get some work in, get your timing, work on whatever you need to, then come right back and fight again three times, because these guys are so good, you're never going to see everything they have to offer um, in one fight uh, against each other. You're going to have to see them in that ring multiple times to see everything that they can bring out. Um, that's why I want to see a trilogy. Plus, that would be like a historical trilogy. And Bob Arum himself wants this fight. You know, people, you got to realize money comes first with him and everything, but he still is a boxing head. The thing is, though, he's seen everything. He's seen it all. This is something he's never seen before. That's why he said, this is the, the one, if I could make any fight out there, this is it. Loma and Rigo. And he, he said, I will go in my own pocket and this is my offer. And they made that offer, you know, and it was, they started negotiating. Um, that's how bad he wants to see it. Because think about it, like I said, he saw everything, but he's never seen uh two gold medalists that won the gold twice uh, in the ring together. I mean, possibly the two best amateurs who ever lived with professional experience fighting each other. And Loma has more professional experience than people recognize because he came through the World Series of Boxing. And I think he went like 7-0 and over there. I can't, they can't quote me, but I believe uh, fightfacts.com um, has his World Series uh, record up on there if you want to go see it. And that's pro. They're fighting with, you know, 8-ounce gloves, no headgear, and they're getting paid. And it's teams, you know, Team Korea or Team Russia, uh, Team China, you know, to Team Brazil. And they're all ex-Olympians, right? They're all ex-Olympians. So he's going up against very stiff competition. Um... But he's dogging him, dogging him out. Uh, the last thing he said about Rigo, though, which was pretty foul. I mean, like he took a dig at him. Uh, well, making him him saying, "Remember, he challenged me, then he pulled out." He did that as a dig too, basically saying he's a punk, um, phony. You know, he challenged me and then didn't even want it. Um, and that doesn't look good. That's why people do need to speak with Rigo. We need this shit straightened out. Rigo has fans. People might not realize I'm a fan of Rigo. I need to know. I need to know if this is promotional or if Rigo is not fighting these guys himself. I want to know if it's Kareeb, uh promotions or, or was it Gary Hyde? Because uh, again, Aram's trying to make it again right now for 2016. Um, see how that pans out. But he also says, um, he says, tells the guy, the camera guy, he says, remember, Rigo is a 122-pounder. He is a smaller guy coming up. 
and he goes, and I'm not going to get much pleasure out of beating on a smaller man. <laughs> Even the translator, when he said it, like, put his head down and, like, smiled when he was saying it, because he was like, oh, you really just said that. He said, I'm not going to get any pleasure out of beating on a smaller man, but uh, I'll be glad to do it, <laughs> you know. Uh, and Rigo, like I said, he's a, he's a bit of a hothead, so hopefully he hears this uh, and, and gets very pissed, very pissed. Um, <clears throat> the last things he said, uh, they asked him if he felt he deserved to be on the pound for pound list because, you know, some people have him on theirs. Um, Loma said he doesn't think he should be on any pound for pound lists. Um, he says he thinks you at least need, you know, like five big names or five uh, champion fights or championship fights, beat five champions or whatever. Um, and he says, I only have one. I only have one as, uh, one, I only have one so far, and that is Gary Russell Jr. Um, he says, so no pound for pound yet, because I haven't beaten anybody yet. Just listen to that. What, you ask anyone about the pound for pound, they're going to be like, well, you know, it's up to the fans. I mean, if they think I should be pound for pound, I'll be it. Or some people will argue and be like, yeah, I'm a pound for pound fighter. Who else has done this? And blah, blah, blah. He's saying straight up, no, I'm not, because I haven't beaten anybody yet. All I have is Gary Russell. I need more. <laughs> uh, you know, he wants the champs. He wants them all, but he just can't get them. Um, last thing he says to the division is he tells the entire featherweight division to shut their mouths or come and fight him. You know, he's basically saying, I'm tired of your talking. Step the fuck up. He says, shut your mouths and come on and fight. Uh, and then right after that, he says, quit hiding behind your manager and promoter, a.k.a. Al Heyman. Uh, quit hiding behind your manager and promoter, or whoever it is at the time, but, you know. So, that's pretty cool. I, I like hearing Loma talk like that. Um, he's saying all the right things. Like I said, it almost makes me understand why he's fighting a scrub because it's similar to Rigo. Uh, none of the champs will fight him, so he just got to stay busy. The sanctioning bodies need to force unifications. A few months ago, uh, there was a big press release that came out. I still have the video up. I'm going to have to go find it and watch it again. Um, it's about three of the sanctioning bodies getting together and enforcing uh, unification fights. And they were trying. There was one sanctioning body that wasn't trying to join it, and they're trying to get that other one in. I need to go back and read into that, and then go research it and see where that's at now, man. Because these sanctioning bodies need to get an undisputed champion in every fucking division, every division, man. Um, let me know what you guys think about any of this. Uh, Loma, the Lee Selby, uh, Gary Russell Jr., the Regan Dow situation, Loma versus Rigo, any of this. Um, is Rigo sounding like um, the fighters that we want to get behind? He sounds like a true fighter, and I believe him. That's the thing. He's not just talking it. I truly, truly believe him. Um, you can tell when someone just yaps because they don't ever try to fight nobody, right? And everyone he's talking about yaps, but then never fights nobody. So, you know, it is what it is, man. Let me know what y'all think. Thunderdome Boxing Talk. Peace.